y'all. It's Thursday. It means it's time for another episode of the Late Night Vision Show. I am one of your humble hosts, and we've got a fun show for you today. We we are rolling through summer. We are fighting through all these reviews. We're getting them out. We've got a lot of things to talk about, but we've got a fun show today to help me introduce what we're talking about. The owner of Outdoor Legacy, Mr. Jason Robertson. What's going on? How you doing, sir? Happy Thursday. Not much. I was, oh, happy Thursday. I was just shocked that you, uh, uh, described yourself as humble, but that humble? was it. That was just, I gotta, you know, gotta try to <laughs> yeah. play it off a little bit. And... That's right. That's right. Big head. Big head. Hey, he's, I... he's got to keep back in his, back in his camera up to get his whole head in there. You know, you told me not to show anything on the show in our little oh, intro gosh. crosstalk, but I got to show something. Hmm. My oh, buddy show? got me one of the nicest birthday gifts I could have ever oh, gotten. Oh, gosh. And he said, all right, I got you, because, you know, we do gifts and all that. And he said, I got you this birthday gift, and we are no longer giving any more gifts <laughs> after this. So he gives exactly. me this very nice bench-made knife, and he knows how I am about knives. But um, he, you can't just tell me not to get you a birthday gift after you give me such a nice nice gift like this no, so hans hans is a gift giver he really is he goes out he's really good like he thinks of things like if you say hey i need this i want this he listens and over the years he's gotten me some some really nice gifts that i'm always like oh no that means i got to get him something and it's got to be <laughs> like well thought out not like you know here's a gift certificate to you know I don't know, Walmart or something. And so anyway, it's, I said, you know what? Hans is a huge knife guy. I mean, he is, he drools over <laughs> knives. He doesn't care anything about guns. All right. uh, I mean, he'll, he'll step over a 640 thermal scope to pick up a <laughs> knife. I mean, this guy, don't let him fool you. If there's ever yeah. a podcast about knives, oh, he's going to be the host. I am. Man, I'm, I'm, I've got some feelers it. out for executive producer positions at other <laughs> knife podcast yeah. shows. Well, I told him, I gave him this knife. I said, this is a nice knife. We're done. Don't yeah. give me any more gifts. No, I don't awesome. want. I, yeah. uh, and so, and I, the thing and he like knows it. about me is when I get a nice knife, I don't like to use it. <laughs> I hate messing it up. And what was the first thing I you said? You said you got to use it. Yeah, so you got to use it. Go use kill something. It. Go kill something. That's right. And, and uh, skin it with that. So anyway, thank you, Jason. That was an awesome, You're very, very awesome gift. So we are, um, we have not. We used to do these shows pretty regularly, and we've gotten way behind on a lot of our topic shows just because of all the reviews. And and y'all, we've got a bunch of reviews still to come. It is summer. We are still busy, thankfully. Uh, if you call Outdoor Legacy and you want to talk to Jason or Ashley or myself, you can definitely do that. Um, we are still trucking along. Business has been good. We are very blessed. It's still been a very busy summer for us. But if you're looking to purchase a night vision or thermal optic, um, OutdoorLegacyGear.com is where you can find all the you know all of the optics on there. Uh, but if you if you need some advice, you want to talk to somebody, uh, give us a call eight seven seven three five zero one eight one eight. We are taking. Uh, questions from the listeners uh we it's been so long jason since we've done one of these shows but we had a lot of questions to weed through um and i know a lot of people will either send us messages on on our social media accounts or they'll email us uh questions and we just kind of put them to the side and we're like oh yeah that's a good one we've got we've got three apiece so i've got three that i'm going to be asking jason that are from listeners and uh jason's got three that he's going to be asking me uh, and some of these are scope related. Some of these are not. Some of them are hunting related. But we're going to jump into it and take I questions. Think mine all turn into yeah. Mine all turn into to scope. Yeah, questions. I don't know why that. I is, think because but, you're the resident well, expert, so people just like, no, hey, I ask Jason that. this, you know, because uh, yeah. Hey, hey, speaking of, I'm interrupting you here, but listen, I, this is important because I, I want people to hear this before we even get started. If you've got one of these questions, like, oh man, I'd like to know this you've got to specify like, Hey, next time you'll do one of these shows, because if you just leave a comment like on YouTube and say, ask a question, we might try to answer yeah. it right there. Yeah. So if you want to hear us like expand on it and, and talk about it a little bit more and more than like a two line answer, yep. then say something like, Hey, next time you do a Q and a show, this is my question or whatever. That way, let us know. Otherwise we're going to try to give you yep. Uh, you know, a short answer in the comments, which might not be exactly what you're looking for. Or so. it might go into right. file 13. So if, it, it if we just don't like 13. the question, it's going into file 13. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, all right. So Hans, let's get this thing rolling. 
Uh, this is a question okay. that I know you've gotten actually more than once. Yeah. Um, and, and it is, what is your favorite? And I'm going to, is when I hear the word e collar, I hate that. I hate the word e collar. To me, it's fingernails on a chalkboard. You know why? It makes me think of an e cigarette. Uh, and I'm like, yeah. I don't even know what that is, but if you're going to smoke, smoke them. But don't, <laughs> I want an e cigarette. I don't right. know what that is. But right. so e collar, electronic collar, yes. an electronic collar. What is your favorite electronic? Uh, predator caller. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this. I'm gonna, I'm adding to the question. What is your favorite electronic caller for hogs? Mm -hmm. What is your favorite electronic caller for coyotes, and why? So the the hog one, I'll answer first. That's easy. I, there's just there's only really one good one, and that's the convergent bullet uh, caller for hogs. I think uh, for calling in hogs, it is the best. It's got the best sound. It it it's got a nice mix of bass and treble where actually when, when you're playing the sounds through the app, so there, there's an app that goes with the convergent call it, uh, the convergent bullet. And those sounds sound very realistic. I mean, the grunts sound deep, uh, you know, and there's enough bass. Those, that's the best. That's an easy question. Um, so I do like that. We've called in a bunch of hogs with it over the years, we used it for a long time. We've, uh, Glenn guests who, uh, he's, um, uh, he's the guy that may have, many of you may have known him through his channel, Hog Zombies. He came up with a lot of the sounds, if not all the sounds, for the Hog Caller app. And he's been on the show many times. Um, Byron South, who was uh, one of the guys that was behind the, the Convergent Bullet, um, he's been on the show. He's, he's a coyote hunter um, by, by trade, uh, by profession. And, uh, no, that's a, that's a great caller for hogs. Now, for coyotes... I'm going to be completely honest with you. I have not tested all of them out on the market. Um, there are a lot of good ones, I'll say. Now, when I was deciding on a good electric le electronic caller, I I get talk. You know, people call me all day, every day, and a lot of you are coy are coyote hunters. And basically, I would say, hey, what what are you using? What do you like? I was just trying to figure out which direction I wanted to go uh, for a good electronic caller, and. So a lot of people said um, the brand Lucky Duck kept coming up. And these were from guys that were, you know, very dedicated predator hunters that basically did it as a side job uh, every season. And that was the color they went with. Now, I had heard a lot of good things about Fox Pro, about Ecotech. I think if, if you go with those brands, you're, you know, you're going to get a good electronic color. But I, I, I'm going to show it. I actually brought it into my office. I'm prepared, Jason. This is the one I use. This is, now this is, gosh, I've had, it's got dust all in it. It's been in my, it stays in my hunting bag. Um, this is the Lucky Duck Revolt. And I think it was around at the time. I, I think now they have like the Super Revolt. So there's m more models now. But this is the Lucky Duck Revolt. It comes with 100 sounds. Um, what I liked about it, uh, the remote works a long ways away. I don't put my collar out more than, no more than 50 yards, but it, it'll go longer than that. What I liked about it, it did have the, um, it does have the, oh, the decoy that you put on top. So that's nice. I don't always use it, but it does have a decoy. But you sit this thing on a tripod on the ground, and it does come with a tripod. And Jason, with your remote, I don't know if you've seen this, with your remote, you can actually rotate this collar 360 degrees. So wow. if you're out calling in one direction and you hear coyotes in another, you can, you know, on your remote, change the direction and move this collar towards where uh, those coyotes are. Or I, sometimes I'll just spin it around slowly in a 360 degree turn just to kind of like throw a sound out everywhere to kind of confuse the coyotes uh, as far as, you know, where to come in, all that stuff. Anyway. I like the. That sounds like an act of desperation. Very. That's the very end of the bag. <laughs> that's the very end of the bag for sure. <laughs> you got that thing like a disco it ball is, out man. there. I I'll mean, you, just, you, that's when you, you need lights on. When that you've already thing, thrown out. Spinning. Yeah, when you've already thrown out all your favorite calls, nothing's working. You're just trying to. You're digging. You're digging. Um, it's a mer merry-go-round. <laughs> but the Lucky Duck has been, has been, um, has raised my level of coyote hunting success a lot. Uh, I, before I used. Oh gosh, I used a very inexpensive, uh, I want to say Fox Pro, and it was fine, but there was just, you know, it's one of those ones that's $150, it comes with 10 calls or whatever, 
and it's not great. I used that for not very long. But this Lucky Duck, I've had it, I want to say, three or four years. It's worked flawlessly. It'll probably break tomorrow. <laughs> but it's worked, it works great. It's called in a bunch of coyotes. The sounds on them are very, very good. You can add sounds. You can. I've added some some sounds onto it. Uh, and, man, I don't know. Um, I Again, the Fox Pro makes the shockwave. I've heard great things about that. Uh, I know Ecotech's got some uh, some good brands, uh, and m- most of these um, electronic caller companies are aligned with these professional coyote hunters that make sounds. And the sounds that I hear out of some of these are are fantastic. Uh, but um, I use Lucky Duck, and I use Lucky Duck Revolt. It's been great. Uh, I've shot a lot of coyotes because of it. It's called in a lot of coyotes. The sounds. Uh, sound very realistic. The barks, the howls, um, the chirps. I mean, it's it's been very, very good. I'll tell you this, and I think that this says a lot. If it broke tomorrow, I'd turn around and I'd go find the same one that I had before. And um, that, I think that says a lot. So that is a long answer for a short question. The Lucky Duck Revolt electronic color is the one that I use, and, and it's been All great. Right. So I think this means that, uh, that that was a very long answer, that you're going to make <laughs> the guy who talks the most, I know. who rambles the most, you're going to make me speed up. All right, what what's the question? Oh, I've, I've already lost my place. Okay, I would say, um, I, I've got my list right here. All right, for you, Jason, these are we're going to get back into scopes. Um, why does my thermal look so bad in high humidity? Is there anything I can do to make it look better, uh, whether turn it on, warm it up, lower contrast? Is there anything that this gentleman can do to fix his scope? So, yes and no. And that is... uh, Yes and no. (laughs) A lot of people want to know why. Well, the why doesn't really matter. Um, Let's just say this. High humidity, which we've been through this a long time ago on the show, it's really the high dew point. Uh, That's that's a really, really big deal. Uh, The higher the dew point, uh, the worse that it looks. Uh, but we generally say humidity. That's what everybody's more familiar with. So, yes, high humidity, high dew point. Your your scope, I don't care what brand you have, it's not going to look as good. We're talking about thermals, by the way, now. Thermals, it is not going to look as good as if you were in a very low humidity situation. Um, the very best weather for thermals is is cold and dry air. The very worst is warm and wet air. So uh, that is what a lot of this country has, especially during the summer months. But a lot of guys find out is even in the winter, especially like down here in the South, I know maybe the Pacific Northwest, you can run into high humidity even when it's cold. And so what do you do? Is there anything you can do? Number one, that's an important thing when you're picking out your scope. Uh, there are certain scopes and certain brands that are going to be better for this than others. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, I also want to point out that there's a lot of guys that really don't understand what high humidity is. They think they have it and they don't. (laughs) You know, I mean, if if you're in the Midwest, you probably don't have it. Yes, there may be times it rains and the humidity is high. I would say don't worry about that. You really pretty much to have these really bad conditions that we're talking about it's going to be mostly guys in the South mm-hmm. and, again, that Pacific Northwest. Uh, I, I, guys, no offense, but m- I, most of you that are up north are not going to have the, the conditions we're talking about near as much. Oh, you know, man. Rains, I can see the hate. Rain. I can see the hate mail. Oh, I know. Right no, now. no, I, I know. Hey, that's good news for those guys, <laughs> though. They, they've got more options on optics, mm. in my opinion. But so you already own your scope, no matter what it is. And you say, it's just not doing what I think it needs to do. What What can I do? Mm. Well, you can't change the weather. Uh, This is a little trick that I advise everybody to try. It works better with some scopes than others. But if it's nasty out there, and you know it is, turn your scope on 10 to 15 minutes at least. 10 to 15 minutes before you go out. I mean, just turn it on and let it warm up. Now, when I say warm up, Uh, People hear that and they think, well, it's already, you know, it's 75 in my house and it's 80 outside. I don't mean that kind of warm up. I mean, like, let your engine warm up. You're letting that thermal sensor uh, get going, 
get into a groove. I, I'm going to say things. I'm, you know, if somebody that understands these sensors from the scientific point of view is going to be like, this guy, <laughs> what is he even saying right now? Uh, but, but we would all agree that there is something about warming it up. I would also leave that scope uh, in uh, automatic calibration while it's warming up. Let that scope nuke, let it calibrate. And what a lot of times you'll find is they will calibrate more often when you first turn them on. And the longer you've got them on, the longer you'll go between those nukes or those calibrations. And so, again, turn it on 10, 15 minutes before you go out and let it just, just let it sit there while you're getting ready, doing whatever. Uh, I think that's going to probably help you a little bit. Another thing that I would, and now let me say this, once you go back out, if you want to turn it back into your, your uh, manual or, or semi-auto, uh, you know, calibration, nuke, that's fine. But while it's sitting there warming up, I'd let that thing nuke as much as it can. Mm. Uh, secondly, uh, play with your color palettes. You know, Hans and I, we were talking about that this morning about an optic that we've been out testing. And we found that, guys, right now our humidity is through the roof. Dew point, super high, it's nasty. We're talking about you know, 10, 11 o'clock at night, it's 83 degrees, that the humidity is in the 80s, the dew point is in the 80s. What does that mean? That means there's water dripping off of everything. There's almost a haze in the air. It's nasty. These are the worst conditions that we will have, and we will have them night after night after night uh, for months, you know, in this period here, maybe we get a couple, you know, a, a good night every once or good, better night every once in a while. So we're fighting this, but Hans and I were talking about an optic that we're testing. And he was like, man, it just looks terrible and black hot right now in this bad conditions, but you know, white hot is, is way better. So play with those color palettes. Maybe you're normally a white hot guy, but try black hot or vice versa or, or whatever. Play with those. Also, if your scope has the option to change um, contrast um, or maybe even sharpness, different scopes have different things, I would try bringing that down just a little bit. Uh, I have found that the higher the contrast or the higher the sharpness, a lot of times you will see, well, let me say this, it just looks worse due to that high humidity and high dew point. So might try adjusting that. That's about all you're really going to be able to do at the end of the day. Uh, you know, every uh, thermal sensor, uh, every brand is a little bit different in what they can and can't do. Um, but I'm just again, turn it on, let it warm up, let that sensor get in that you know uh, get warmed up and in that rhythm of calibrating, and then play with your settings, play with your color palettes. That's about all you can try. Yeah, that's really, I mean, that's all you can do. It's one of those things that is unavoidable with high humidity, but that's, uh, I wish it wasn't that way, but that's just as far as letting it warm up, yep. maybe adjusting the contrast, that's about it. But um, besides that, who wants to be out hunting when it's like this anyway? I, know. I mean, I know we are, but it's not my favorite uh, time. It is. You're just walking back a sweaty mess. But hey, you got it's a question, a another question for me? Yes. Okay. All right. Here we go. Moving on. And you on. can't complain about how uh, long I take because, I mean, you. Th that was pretty quick. Yeah, that was pretty quick. quick. I'm going to go quicker. Okay. All right. Hans, why do you and Jason not talk about reloading? Surely <laughs> you guys, as much as y'all shoot, you shoot all the time. You're always testing scopes. You're hunters. Surely you're reloaders. What's going on? You know, I've talked about being interested in reloading in the past, uh, and then I talked to Jason about it, and he completely talks me out of it because he's like, why would you even? No, I'm, I'm joking. I would it's say. True. It's actually true. I would say <laughs> I've thought about it in the past, but honestly, I, I feel like I'm so busy that I can't pick up another hobby uh, to, to try to learn and do. There's a lot of people that reload, and, and for very good reasons. I mean, being able to get a specific – uh, uh, velocity and distance and, and, uh, you know, impact, uh, these other things that we don't understand, other things we don't understand <laughs> as long range shooters and a shooter, you know, but yeah. I would say it's something I've thought about in the past. It's not anything that I've put any time or effort into studying to do. I, I do see a, a very good purpose for it. Um, it really, when there was an ammo shortage, what, a couple years ago during kind of during mm -hmm. COVID, I really thought about it a lot more, but there was an ammo shortage, but there was a 
projectile yeah, shortage right. and uh, you yeah, know powder shortage, powder. everything else. So it wouldn't have done me any good. But you know, we Jason and I don't reload. Um, it's nothing more than just having the time to learn a new skill, and uh, we're just so busy doing everything, other things. But I think it's kind of cool when I see people do it. When I see a video, I'm like, man, that seems like something I I should get into. But just haven't. Uh, so to say, bit in the bullet and, and got into it and got to do it. What about you? I mean, I know your thoughts on it, but you seem like yeah, somebody that I mean, would reload in the past in a prior life. N- n- no, it's not my thing. I mean, it, it's, you know, my brother does some reloading and he's always, you know, come test this out, come test that out. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I have, be honest, he doesn't watch this, I don't think, so I don't want to hurt his feelings. <laughs> I have zero interest in testing his stuff out. Here's why. Because what what good does two or three boxes yeah. of something do me? Because I'm going to go out and, and shoot half of a box to get something zeroed. Then I'm going to go out, I'm going to go hunting with it. And, you know, if we're hunting hogs, I'm going to burn through that ammo and... It's not like, again, he made it, not me. So it's not like I can go back in the house and go make four more boxes of it. So then then I'm on somebody else's timetable. So, man, you know, the other thing, and this is just kind of the way I am, I am a, uh, a bit of a hoarder when it comes to ammo. <laughs> so having two boxes, three boxes, five boxes, 10 boxes, 50 boxes, that's not enough for me. I mean, Hans knows this and he's the same way. He doesn't want to admit it. But when we get into a caliber, like we've got into Grindel's, uh, we amass thousands <laughs> and thousands of rounds. Man, of, can't you tell people of, that. Uh, I don't know who he's talking about. Yeah, y'all. exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll buy one box we, at a time. I, I, but I am that guy. I mean, if I, if I own a caliber, it, I, I won't, if I own a caliber, I have a thousand rounds, bare minimum, <laughs> even if it's a bolt action and I'm not going to shoot that thing a hundred times in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. That's just me. And so I, it doesn't make sense. I'm not going to go out there. I, there's no way I have time to, to be in there in my living room stamping out that kind <laughs> of yeah. ammo. So I do think it's a cool thing. Yeah. I think it's an awesome uh skill to have and to know i do think that there's you know obviously a time uh, and a day and a place where that could be very important to have uh, again like han said uh, i don't have time i think if i was older if i was retired i mm-hmm. didn't have kids at home i mean there's i can definitely see a time that would be fun to do but man just not enough time and yeah. and as, as long as you know uh, i've got enough ammo in there that i'm gonna probably shoot my barrel out before i shoot the yeah. ammo then, exactly. then i'm good all right Next question. This one's for you. Um, this is a pretty, pretty easy one, I would say. Is buying a QD mount worth it? Do I really need one if I'm leaving it on my rifle? No, it's not worth it, and uh, you don't need it if you're leaving it on your rifle. Next question. Awesome. That, great right, job. No, <laughs> no, so, so, <laughs> no, you don't need a QD mount unless you need a QD mm-hmm. mount. So if you're leaving it on your rifle, uh, you know, whatever optic that you've got, if you're going to mount it, you're going to get it the way you want it, and you're literally, it's married and it's staying there, don't get a QD mount. I mean, it's perfect. It just, mm-hmm. just go with it, and, and you're good to go. Um, I think a lot of guys do get QD mounts and don't need it. Um, I think it's, it's kind of like, well, it looks cool, and, you know, I like the idea of it. And then they don't ever take the optic off. And I mean, nowadays, a lot of scopes come with QD mounts. So, and that's fine. Um, there is no downside to a quick detach mount. All right. I just want to be clear on that. A quality quick detach mount like American Defense, which is, uh, you mm-hmm. know, that we believe the best uh, QD mounts uh, made in the United States. That's our opinion. And that's what the manufacturers agree with because that's who they're almost all using. Uh, if it comes with it, great uh put it on there you're not losing anything by that you know not being a permanent mount but if you're going to take it off and, and swap between rifles or swap scopes different scopes on your rifle maybe a daytime scope and then put your thermal or your night vision scope on mm-hmm. then yeah but if you don't need it mm-hmm. you know no you don't have to do it if right. you're not going to take it off hold it in your hand right. look through your scope that way no i mean i i think that there is some peer pressure to buying a, a qd mount of Oh well, I got to buy a QD mount because I'm buying a thermal or night vision scope, and I don't think so at all. I mean, if, if you have a need for it, buy one. Mm-hmm. If not, there's no reason. Yeah. Agreed. All right, let's get through the next one. 
Okay. You got to go to this. This one is, I don't know how you're going to do this quickly because oh, this, we're going to dedicate a show to this sometime because it's, it's a great question. We get it all the time. And I, I really don't know how you're going to do this quickly, <laughs> but basically it boils down to uh, the, the question is asked in a lot of different ways, mm-hmm. but Hey, I've got a budget and this is my budget and I can afford X. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's say I can afford a, mid-range thermal scope. Maybe I can afford a $2,500 thermal scope. Do I just buy this $2,500 thermal scope or do I buy an $800, you know, night vision scope and a $1,200 thermal monocular? Or do I buy a monocular first? Don't buy a scope at all? Or Mm. what combination? How do I do this? I need the exact right answer. Sum it all up in 30 seconds or less. I don't think, yeah, I don't think there's a right answer. I think it's personal preference. I think that I'll say this. And Jason, you may disagree with this. We may be completely on opposite Uh pages. Uh Uh-oh. Uh, uh, I when this people is where call we part up, ways, guys, the show breaks. Yeah, up I right get this here. question all the time, and and what I my what I say is, two optics are better than one, um, yeah. and the reason being is because if you buy, let's say you go out and buy the the nicest thermal scope that you can afford, um, you are at some point gonna want a monocular, whether it's a month from now, six months from now, a year from now, you're gonna need a monocular. You're gonna get tired of scanning with your rifle or with your scope on a rifle. It's just, you can do it. It's not practical. You can take the scope off and scan with it and put it back on the rifle with a QD mount while you're hunting, but that's not very practical or that's not a long, uh, it's not a a long range game plan there. Um, I would say you're looking through your monocular 95% of the time. You're only looking through your scope 5% of the time. I would invest my, my money, uh, in a good monocular, uh, and you can get a, a a great night vision scope now for anywhere from five or six hundred dollars all the way to fourteen hundred dollars, whatever your budget allows. But you can get um, a very good night vision scope for uh, you know not not thermal money, uh, and you can get a very good uh, gosh, you can get a very good monocular from two thousand uh, dollars all the way up to four thousand dollars i mean you can, even well, a little bit well, lower than, than that 2, yeah even less I mean, than 15 1600 yep. yeah so i would i would invest in uh like i said two optics uh is better than one i would get if i could i would invest uh, my money in a very good monocular uh because you want a monocular that's easy on the eyes good eye uh good picture quality it's you're not going to get as bad eye fatigue so that's the short answer Two optics is better than one, and if your budget is set at a certain amount, I would get a good monocular and get a night vision scope first, and then use the night vision scope for a while, and then later on down the road, if your budget allows you to, you can invest in into a, a, a thermal scope. So that's the shortest yeah, answer. I, I think that's putting what I a bow on yeah. that, yeah, I think that's a great answer, and I would just say this. I totally 100% agree. Um, I will always take two optics over one. There's some guys that that are in a budget constraint that they can't afford that. They can only afford maybe just a night vision scope, and I think that's perfectly fine. You need to do whatever is within your budget. But Hans is right. Two optics is better than one, even if that means one is night vision Mm -hmm. and the handheld is thermal. Uh, That's it's okay. That that that's the way it has to be. Thermal, thermal. Yeah. I think is the ultimate goal. But I would absolutely absolutely take a night vision scope and a thermal handheld over there's a, one good thermal scope there's a lot of every pe- single there's time. a lot of people that have a big budget but still choose to get a thermal monocular and a night vision scope because with a thermal monocular you still have the advantage of detection uh, and with a night yeah. vision scope you have the advantage of of id so uh, i think mm-hmm. that that's a very good combination but again i mean oh, yeah. obviously um, depending on your budget. But that's why it's important to talk with people that know. You can call us and we can talk through it further. Got it. All right. Last question. Here we go, Hans. What is it? Oh, gosh. I, for some reason, I keep getting off my list. Let me find it real quick. All right. Man. So this one uh, this one should be pretty easy. What co- oh, yeah, This All is right. like a Pandora's box. What color palette is best? Which do you and Hans use? I know the answer to that. Very easy. Mm-hmm. I know what you like. And, uh, yeah. You know. uh, oh, yeah. So... So the answer is simple. What is best is what you like. Mm-hmm. And I cannot tell you what you like. Hans and I agree on so many things. If we didn't, we couldn't do what we do. Um, we couldn't 
do this show together. We couldn't sell scopes. We couldn't, we couldn't work for me. There's so many things we couldn't do. We, we work together well because we agree oddly on so many things. But when it comes to color palettes, uh -huh. I mean, this, we cannot be more opposite. Yeah. Uh, if you watch our videos and reviews and you see a, uh, a white hot <laughs> video from the scope, I took it. Yeah. If you see black hot, right. he took it, or it's one when I was like, oh, Hans is gonna be mad. I didn't record in black hot. Yeah. So if there's so if there's uh if there's a hundred videos and 70 of them are black hot, yep. 50 of those were Hans's, yeah. and then th that other, you know, 20 were me going, oh, yeah, I forgot I got to record in Black Hot. So, no, yeah. I'm a White Hot guy. Absolutely love it. Uh, I, I think, do not and I think like Ashley's, Black Hot. In, I think Ashley in, likes White Hot, too, because I see a lot of his videos come through in White Hot as well. Yeah. yeah. I think so. So, I, it's just, but it's what you mm -hmm. like. I will say this. Very, very rarely do either one of us, uh, are, are we going to voluntarily use anything else, yeah. Red Hot, Rainbow, whatever. If you see our videos, and I know Hans gets on a kick sometimes, and he'll put the thumbnail for our videos <laughs> in like one of these full rainbow. I just want to tell you this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you on this secret. We both hate that, but people click on it. Yeah. And so that's why he does Clickbait. that. It is horrendous, <laughs> horrendous. It is. We it's would bad. never do that. But, but. People that are new to thermal that have not used thermal, have not hunted with thermal, they think that's what they want and they like it and they click on it. Yeah. Then they get to, you know, they get a little experience, they get to see and they go, okay, yeah, maybe black hot and white. Hot there was, there was but, somebody in the industry that told us one time that color palettes sell scopes. And, uh, yeah. And, and yeah, so people kind of get googly on, like, oh man, look at all the color palettes. Rarely do they use a lot of them. But I will say, um, no. Patrick, uh, who's one of our pro staffers, ETX Thermal Hunter. Mm -hmm. He loves purple, and I just, I don't like it. I know you don't care for it, yeah. but he likes like it, it. And, and he says that he can, it, it, the contrast of the animal in the background is a lot better. I've, I've heard a couple other people say that. Uh, yeah. Red, uh, Pulsar's so, got like red monochrome, they say, works pretty well in high humidity, but yeah. I'm a black hot guy, well, man. The, the one that people really, I think, like a lot um especially people that haven't used it. But even when they do, some people really do, is, is a red hot. Mm -hmm. So it's like where the animal glows red. Right. I remember when FLIR came out with that years ago, yeah. back when they were in business, uh, that was a big deal. Man, they had that and people mm -hmm. wanted it. Oh, they saw it and they loved it. <laughs> so now most manufacturers have something like that. But here's the thing, guys. Don't let Hans or I shame you or your buddies. <laughs> you use what you like. And I mean that white hot and black hot are the two most common. That's what I would say 90 to 95% of, you know, frequent dedicated thermal hunters are going to use. Yeah. However, if you like red hot or purple or whatever it is, that's what you need to use. You need to use what you like. There's no right or wrong. Go through every one of them while you're out in the field looking at animals and go, oh, I kind of like this or I don't. And, and you, what you might find is, oh, I like this. And you use it for, you know, a night and go, oh, maybe I don't. Right. So use what you like the best. But I'm a white hot guy. Yeah. Hans is a, a black hot guy. It is absolutely chocolate. And well, I will say, you said choose and use what you want to use. If you send us a, a video to watch and it's in rainbow, we're going to be judging you. We're not going to say anything external, but we're going to judge you on the inside. No, I'm playing. That's it. probably yeah. true. That's probably true. Well, all right, guys, listen. Yeah, did we get through uh, all? Yeah, we did get through all of them. Right? We got through yeah, all of them. Nice. Got through Thank you for the questions. That's yeah. awesome. There were some good questions. Yeah, th this is a fun show. We like doing it because we get to talk about a little bit of everything, and it's kind of all over the place, and we enjoy that. Uh, it, it gets us out of the, the grind of either talking about you know one certain scope or one certain topic it's a it's a scattergun approach so we like it guys if you have questions again as i mentioned at the beginning of the show uh don't just ask your question if you want it to be on a show like this um say that in the comment mm -hmm. in the email and the social media message however you send it to us just say hey next time you do a q a show this is my question yeah. and put that and then we'll write it down and uh, hopefully it'll, it'll make the cut into the big show. We need, but, we need some funny questions, uh, some funny personal questions. Next time. Yeah. Oh gosh, that's <laughs> scary. Yeah. So, no. All right, guys, we hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, you can find all of the past episodes uh, on YouTube. 
or thelatenightvisionshow.com. You can also find us on all the podcast apps. Please like, please mm-hmm. subscribe, uh, whatever you do there so that you're notified when we've got new shows. The shows do air every Thursday, and we really hope to see you here on this channel again soon. If you're looking for a night vision or a thermal optic outdoor, legacygear.com, 877-350-1818. Hans is right. He already said it. If you're looking to buy a scope, we would love to have your business. And a service we offer our customers is one-on-one personal support from Hans, Ashley, uh, or myself. And we will walk you through picking out the right scope and then help you with the purchase and get it shipped right to your door. That's what we do for a living. That's what keeps this show on the air. We'd love to have your business mm-hmm. there. Uh, check Hans out. Uh, H-A-N-S-E-T-X. He's on YouTube. He's on Instagram. He's on Facebook. Uh, he is releasing all kinds of new review videos all the time on his YouTube channel and putting out all kinds of cool content on social media. Our other salesman, Ashley, uh, Ashley Rowe, he is at R-O-W-E, Rowe, E-T-X. Mm-hmm. So R-O-W-E-E-T-X uh, on uh, Facebook and Instagram and YouTube mm-hmm. as well. So check him out. He's always putting out short video clips and stuff from his field uh, test on these optics. Uh, guys, we really appreciate it. We hope to see y'all again here next week. Yeah. Well, this has been another episode of Late Night Vision Show. And uh, if you think about it, uh, drop us a comment, share share the show. We'd love to be able to get this show to continue to grow. We've got over, gosh, 12,000 YouTube subscribers. We've earned each one of them uh, over the last several years, and we earned them with all the blood, sweat, and tears with this show. Um, but we've got th- many, many thousands more on audio-only podcast versions, and we thank you all very much. Um, this has been uh, a fun show, and we will get- continue to do this. Uh, but we look forward to seeing you all next week right here on the Late Night Vision Show. We'll see you all next week. Stay safe in the fields. Keep making them bacon pancakes. 